here's a 3D painting. I did collage, mix, total mixed media, watercolour, uh, acrylic, sand, resin, and keep watching and I'll show you how I made this. Welcome back to my channel. So, I have been trying to do this for so long. I absolutely hate drawing. I can draw, but it takes me so long where some people are natural drawers. I'm much more a natural charcoal person or painter. Like, give me charcoal and I can draw. Give me a pencil, I can't draw. Okay, so I can, I hope you can see what I've done. So I've just taken a piece of parchment paper and taken it over the front fin of the turtle and drawn out the shapes that I want to cut out of the resin drop-offs that I have. And here are all my resin drop-offs. I collect them, only if they're worth collecting. I won't catch the little tiny drips. And because I mainly do beachy stuff, they're mainly beachy colors and greens and blues. I've got a few golds, so and I've got some reds, but you know, I'll probably just use the blues. So what I'm gonna do now is I have another plastic container here. I'm gonna fill that with really, really hot water and put in put the colors I want in there and then cut them out according to this shape. And this is going to be really hard to video. So um, basically what I'm going to do, okay, let's take this weird, weird one here. If this had been in the water, I would take this and this would be soft because it's been in hot water and I would cut out this shape and I mean I've tried to get as many shapes in this as possible and cut out three shapes and then I'm going to use E6000 glue which looks like this and this is my favorite because I prefer the clear one when all the pieces from all the shapes are adhered to the board then I will erase all the pencil marks then I'll begin the watercolor in between and uh, I'm not going to resin over the top because the resin is going to come from all these pieces. I am like, I literally have so many pieces. So this is a good tip. Hang on to all your pieces. If you can, color coordinate them. I mean, I've got, there's a reddish one here. That has some gold in it. And maybe the turtle could do with some gold highlights. But you can see it's predominantly blue. So, anyway, I'm going to go to the next step and then we will carry on. So, this is what I've been doing. Um, it looks complicated, but actually, while you get into the swing of it, it's really not. Because what I was doing is trying to be so precise on my shapes but actually oops you don't have to be that precise because all I'm going to do is glue like one little center piece down and then erase all the pencil marks then I'm going to go over with an eraser and take out all these pencil marks. Then I'm gonna go over it with a watercolor pencil. 
which I probably should have done in the first place. But anyway, what's done is done. And draw the outline of the fin or the leg. Do turtles have fins or legs? Um, so I'm going to show you how, you see this one and this one, I'm going to show you how I cut them out. It's approximation. I know kind of how this looks and kind of how this sort of looks like a tooth. And it's going to have to be a bit smaller because I don't want it to touch that one. And the other thing I have are these scissors, which I got from Home Depot, which is a hardware store, do it all, um, the do it center, whatever country you live in, it's, you know, the big hardware store. These are industrial scissors and they will cut through anything apart from steel fences but they are really really strong and they'll cut through resin you need this these scissors to do this so i'm going to show you how i cut the next piece out then i'm just gonna cut the rest out and bring you back hey sorry about the backdrop I'm going to cut out this one and this one um, just to show you. So this one's just kind of, and I can move this. There's no rule at all. Kind of want a bit of a gap between them. So even though it's not in exactly the place that I drew it, I can rub out that pencil mark. So I just need this, which is like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch narrowing and I have this and so I'm literally what is it I don't know what that is um and cut it out it doesn't have to be exact it's good to cut off pieces as well makes it much easier the only thing I would suggest, if you can do anything like this, try to make it organically shaped. It doesn't have to be perfectly shaped. But try to have no jagged edges. Take your scissors and try to make it rounded. Because turtles, you know, whatever you're doing. If you're doing something not organic, that's fine. So, all right, you see, that's nothing like the shape I drew, but the placement is perfect. My turtles, scales and pieces of shells are all down. I'm going to go and, and actually this piece of board and it's a board is quite large and I was going to cut it but I'm not going to it is I hope you can see my ruler um 12 by hang on that's 18 36 and so what I've decided to do is I'm going to watercolour the turtle and then when that's dry, I then am going to acrylic the rest of it. And when I get to do that piece, I'll lift the camera up and you'll be able to see that. I have a reference picture of a gorgeous turtle. Obviously, my mosaic is not the same color as his shell but that's or her shell that's fine i just wanted reference more for the lines and lovely golden tummy and 
um, you know, things like they have these really cute sharp mouths or beaks. And again, you know, it's abstract, but I am going to put my turtle down. I'm also going to work with these Japanese watercolors and they are so rich. They're called Kuritaki and they come in a box like this. I've had these for a few years. I've done quite a few watercolor pictures or paintings and they're so vibrant. So you get this, you get this kind of grid and you just put a blob of each color so that you know what you're working with. It doesn't come with these painted on, you do it. Um, and yeah, they're so vibrant. So I'm going to get my water ready. I'm gonna put my paints right next to my little turtle's head. This will be to the side, which you probably can't see. Um, all my watercolor brushes I left in my other home in the Caribbean because that's where I like to do watercolors. Um, so I bought these. I'm not sure which brushes I'm going to use. Probably, I don't know, a selection. I tend to try not to use too many different types of brushes. Uh, anyway, so let me get my water ready and I will then start my watercolour. I've lifted you up a little bit. The other thing that when you're doing watercolour, oh, I've decided to use um, three different types of round brushes, have two cups of water, one to wet the canvas or board or whatever you're using, and then the other one to just keep your brush clean. Um, and that's because I like to use as few brushes as possible and then always have paper towel on hand. So here's my turtle. And this is his eye. And I think I'm going to do that last. I'm going to get on with the shell. And um, I think I'm going to start on the larger size to, no, I'm not. I'm going to go on the medium size. So I've got this. I've got my kitchen towel ready. And I'm going with kind of a burnt umber to begin with. Um, and the other thing that's really good, so this water is going to get really dirty, as you can see. So what's really nice is when you get everything very wet, you will see the watercolour will bleed into each other. And this, these are watercolour pencils that I used, and they are um, favoured Faber Castell watercolor pencils, and as soon as you touch them with water, the color they they turn into watercolor. So, dirty water. I am going to start this. Now, this is going to react very differently from watercolor paper, and it's probably going to take several layers because the board is going to reject the watercolour, but that's okay. It'll be multi-layered. Now I'm going to go in. And regularly clean your brush. So my brush is clean. I can put it in the clean water when I want to change colour. I think I'm going to go for a dark brown which is why I referenced this so I think I'm gonna go for one of these two probably this one I 
and then just go in between in between when this first layer of watercolor dries it'll give the second layer of watercolor more of a a grip if that makes sense to hang on to and I think what I'm going to do is I bought these pens I've got to dig them out they arrived a couple of weeks ago and they are like literally like putting aluminium foil down or you know aluminum foil um they look amazing and i think that's what i'm going to do on the edge of this so Okay, so that's my turtle finished. And then I'm gonna come back and do the acrylic painting. So this really will be, oh, I think I might just do, hmm, actually, before we break off, let me see. Shoot. Um, I think I'm going to just do a gentle little outline on his tummy. Just a gentle one. Just a smudgy little outline on his underbelly. Yeah. I think once all the background's put in and everything, this is going to be a really uh, interesting painting. Watercolour, acrylic, resin, collage, truly mixed media. So let this completely dry. And then I'm gonna come put the background in. Right, you definitely have a bird's eye view now. Um, for this part of the painting, I'm going to use acrylics. Artist Loft Light Blue, Aqua Green, Artezas Sea Green, and Artist Loft, um, this is a medium uh, viscosity, powder blue. And then I do have a dark blue on hand on Arteza Thalo Blue in case I want to add some in it. And here is my palette. And I've put the man out here. I'm not using any water. The only um, kind of mixing medium I'm going to use is Floatron. And let's move these out of the way. 
And the brushes I'm going to use are, um, I like filbert brushes so personally. I've got a really big one, which I'm going to use for lots of the blending, a medium and a smallish one, and then an angled brush for, you know, these tiny little areas here. So without further ado, I'm going to begin down here. Oh, and the other thing I listed like below in the early part of the video is on the turtle's body I did use gouache which is it's a it is like a watercolor if you really water it down it's like a watercolor if you don't water it down so much it's sort of like an acrylic and the reason I did that is because I was finding the watercolor wasn't really sticking to the board properly. So this is watercolour, gouache, and I'm going to get on and paint. And again, a lot of this is going to be in time lapse. I'm going to let that dry and um, when it's completely dry I'm going to give it a second coat and then once that's done I will come back and show you the finished um, ocean and then I will briefly show you the pen that I got I've got to find it um, that I'm going to do on the edging, but stay tuned, watch this space. Here's the finished result. So what I decided to do, I was disappointed with, I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a resin freak, but anyway, so the background, you know, not the background, you know, the ocean I loved, but it was a bit, flat so if you can see probably with all the reflections I resined just the background not over the turtle and then sprinkled some sand and some pebbles there are the details let me see if I can really get you to see the shine on the resin there we go. And then here's some details on the turtle. I'll bring you in closer. And you can see like a 3D effect. of the mosaic pieces anyway thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time